Hi, I'm Colin McFader with post Pictures, and today I wanted to take a moment to just kind of go over a few different things, um, one of which is, of course, the update um, version 2 of post Web 65 so I'm going to go through kind of what that is, um, a few other updates um, regarding some kind of exciting news, um, and then also kind of an under-the-hood look at the post M process more so than I've done before. So firstly, um, the new version of post Web 65 um, that is completely redone from the ground up. So the color is similar to the older version, um, but I actually completely started from, from scratch and built an entirely new node structure and uh, an entirely new process of, um, you know, the way that the, the actual um, process works. Um, so I'll get into that sort of more in detail once I get into the section about like where we take a look under the hood of, of kind of how the node structure works. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just kind of go over through a few other things real quick. Um, so firstly, uh, Dehancer, which of course is the um, a film emulation software that's uh, available for download, um, is they've just released their new 4.0 um, version, which I'll get into a little bit as well, because of course I'm using that in my process, um, and a new Windows release for Dehancer. Um, so as I mentioned in the episode um, that I did about the review of Dehancer, um, you can use the promo code POSTROMO and get 10% off of Dehancer. Um, the link will be in the description. So if you're interested in downloading that, that is there. Secondly, um, I have recently done some camera tests with uh, Ari, um, the, the camera company. They were very generous in allowing me to get some camera tests with them so that I could um, develop a version of Postron 165 for um, Ari cameras, which is really exciting because, of course, those are kind of the standard, industry standard for larger budget digital filmmaking. So um, very much looking forward to getting that out. It'll be a few, a little, just a little bit as I tweak it, um, because of course I've got to build that process from scratch as well. It can't just be, you know, adapted over from the Blackmagic version, um, but that will be going up soon. The third thing I want to talk about is Panavision. So I'm actually going to be going to Panavision in the fall um, and shooting some 35 millimeter film alongside in a controlled environment with um, my Ursa G2, and I'm going to be directly building a, uh, just kind of tweaking, I guess, the pro post norm process to completely match the film. Um, so that's kind of exciting. That'll be coming in the fall. Of course, if you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe. I very rarely ask people to do that, but, um, you know, that's kind of a surefire way that you don't miss it if you just subscribe. So firstly, I kind of want to get into just the general um, stuff that that is kind of perhaps noticeable in this footage compared to the older process. Um, so firstly, uh, one of the things that I really didn't like about the older process were really garish reds and really garish greens. Um, and, you know, some colors were just kind of saturated very weirdly, or the luminosity, the luminance of those colors at certain hues got really kind of wonky. And that was really where the idea came from to just build it from scratch, because as I tried to kind of reverse some of those effects, um, and there were sort of more side effects of other color transforms that I'd done, um, it just became kind of like a, you know, patching up water holes that, you know, are coming out of a water tank or something. So there's an analogy for you. Um, whereas this new process, I really, from the get-go, made sure that, you know, if I was doing a transform in some certain way, that the colors wouldn't be immediately shifted into a different direction. Um, heavily based this version off of, um, as previous versions were sort of based, but I would say that this version uh, was certainly the most based off of Yedlin's process, that's Steve Yedlin, um, in that I was going basically side by side with footage of his trying to match similar styles of shooting um, that he does in his demos so that I could actually get a very similar product. So without further ado, let's look at what we're actually doing under the hood. So how the process actually works. If you've seen or other videos that I've done on film emulation, most uh, notably the uh, achieving the celluloid film look, you may remember that I sort of did an under the hood look in that video. However, that process was much more designed to be a easy to use, really quick kind of solution for film emulation and not really an authentic 
authentic process. It was much more a beginner's guide to say, you know, if you want to emulate film or you want to get sort of a, a, a you know, quote unquote film look, um, you can actually just kind of do this really quickly. And it, it does get you to a point that sort of looks like film and can be passable for, you know, commercial use and stuff like that. Whereas this is much more of an advanced process for someone who's more familiar with working in Resolve. Um, so I do, you know, I'm kind of, this is maybe a long overdue, but um, it's not going to be a tutorial. I'm not going to go in and sort of show like the shifts exactly I made, but I'll show you kind of a general breakdown of what the process consists of and um, exactly what's going on in the color sense. So let's also take a look real quick. I'm going to show you guys just kind of the old processes, um, just, you know, what the node structure on that one looked like, just so you can see how, how different this is. So right here, this is the old node process, only four nodes, not major. Um, there was, of course, you know, stuff going on with uh, saturation curves and things like that and, and stuff like, you know, all the different, uh, you know, highlight curves and, and stuff and I was using the um, color warper here um, but ultimately it's it was a very simple simple uh, structure of, of a node structure and there wasn't really any division in terms of highlights versus shadows and things like that at least not in the the node section now if we go to the new version the new post journal 165 um, v2 you can see how much more complicated and if I close this over here how much more complicated this node structure is than it was before. Um, so you can see, and again, this is kind of where I'll go through a little bit and just kind of show you guys a little bit of a under the hood. So you can see that the first one, of course, is just our, our general um, color transform. Um, then we've got our second, which is just an exposure. So um, this is where I've done the exposure curves and uh, I'm just kind of gotten things where I want them to be. Um, so just a general exposure and very slight, you know, basically just a color correction pass. The first one is a control. Um, so this one just slightly shifts things um, where I need them. So this kind of, again, just brings that, that first one back into, you know, if, if, if that needs to be shifted a little bit, this is just a way to get things um, there and, and to increase some contrast as well. And then we've got the first kind of division. So these are stacked as layers. They're all interacting um, simultaneously. So you've got the here, I've got them all divided into uh, their different uh, lighting section. So I've got the darks here. So this node is qualified only for um, the the darker sections. So if I turn on the, you, the qualifying um, just display here, the matte display, you can see what is actually being affected by each layer. So we've got the darks here, of course, just the, the darker section of the image. Low mids are kind of out here. Um, then we've got the skin tones, of course, so just the skins and of course a little bit other parts kind of bleed into that um, and the highs and you can see as we go through different sections so there's the highs you can see uh, skins are, are picking up you know more than the skin but of course the skin tones are really what that's being picked up there the low mids just down here and then of course the darks the darker sections then if we go over here you can see that we've got a individual node for the greens for the reds and for the blues turn off that qualifier there for a second. So really what, what's important about this process is the, um, because again, digital will interact with color and light differently than film will. Um, many cases, the opposite of the way that film will. So for example, when film gets over uh, exposed, it desaturates, whereas digital tends to get very garish when it gets overexposed and tends to almost saturate the image. Um, and similarly, again, with desaturation, film will sort of, uh, or for sort of lower luminance, so darker image, film will sort of uh, saturate the image more, whereas digital will tend to um, sort of desaturate, lose a little bit of the saturation in a darker image. So again, kind of fundamentally the opposite. So that's why it's important to have all of these individual elements qualified so that they can be shifted in a direction that film would go without affecting other parts of the image. One of the more difficult aspects of this this style is that you've really got to make sure that if you're only qualifying the darks, that you've got 
you've got to strike a balance between having a little bit of a blur, so a little bit of a give or take, so that it's not such a harsh step, so that the shadows, if I turn the shadows to a certain direction, that there's not like a a stair step here where, where you can see the definitive point where it's qualified into shadows and where it's not, you kind of have to blur it a little bit, which you can see here, which can be a little bit difficult because you can go too far with the blur, um, which I had, uh, you know, had to work on for a while and to get that, that exact qualification right. Otherwise you may have an area of, you know, overexposed highlights next to an area of really, really underexposed darks. And those areas can sort of bleed into each other and cause some weird artifacting where some of the highlights may be oversaturated or some of the darks may be undersaturated and you can almost see the division. So you really have to work with the in and out ratios and the um, the qualification, kind of the blur radius of the qualifications to, to get it correct. And again, same goes for the greens, the reds and the blues. You don't just want to qualify. Um, let me get to an image that has some red here. Um, you don't just want to qualify the reds and then, you know, have there be no blur outside of the reds. Otherwise, you may find that you're you're qualifying it, but you're not actually, um, you're kind of causing it a little bit of artifacting because of how, how harsh that red might be uh, changed or something. So you might be able to see just the divisions of the image, and you don't want to see that. So same, again, um, goes for blues, greens, and reds. Then, of course, we've got just at the end here a saturation um, node, which just is kind of almost like the final corrections for the image, the color correction. And then we've got our last node, which is Dehancer. So this is where the film grain, and I've actually switched in version 4.0 of Dehancer to using their halation. So you might remember in the Dehancer review that I did, um, I, I was critical of the halation process there because it was a little bit clunky to work with, um, and I didn't find that it was all that accurate. And from the ground up, they've completely revamped their, their halation process, and it's really, really good now, really easy to use, doesn't kind of blow out as, as easily as the older ones, so I'm really, really happy with that. Another uh, great addition to Dehancer now is their new grain. Um, they've, they've, they've done some changes to their grain emulation and their grain algorithms. Of course, it's procedurally generated grain, meaning the grain is almost con computer generated from every image as opposed to something like Film Convert, which is um, a, a sampled grain. So that's real images of grain. There are pros and cons to each, but I prefer procedural because procedural actually is generating grain from every individual image. Um, which is which is to me better because the grain actually belongs to the image. So if I zoom in here, you can see that um, the grain is is just slightly different, but I really like it. Um, I really am, am am kind of thrilled with with this new grain process that they've done. Um, I think it looks really good. I think it looks really authentic. Um, I think that they've got the uh, the saturation of the grain, which of course is all customizable, but I think that they've got just even the, the individual grain colors are, are very, very accurate to what real film looks like. If you were to compare that and put it right beside real film, it looks really good. Um, so again, of course, this is, this is all, you know, I don't use the color from Dehancer. The color is good in Dehancer, um, but I just prefer to use my own process, but I've got the halation, which is just, you know, again, also customized and the grain, which is customized to my liking. So that's really what the new process is, um, you know, all about. It's it's not a huge change in terms of visually, and that old version will still be online if you prefer it, or if you've started, you know, building things around it, then that old version is still going to be available for download online. But this new version, I think, is much better. I think it's much more accurate. Um, I think that the the color responses and the, the color responses, especially to things like luminosity, luminance are very, very accurate to what real film looks like. And I think I've gotten this closer than I ever have before, which is really, really exciting and I'm very happy with. And if you've got any questions, of course, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I try to do my best to respond to everything. Um, look out for that Aerie version as well. If you use an Aerie Alexa or something like that, um, look out for that version coming out shortly. It'll be out pretty soon and I'll put an update um, just on my channel uh, community page when that comes out. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy it.